Hello remodeling fans, this is Jay with Classic Kitchens Etc. And today we are in our latest kitchen remodel. So let me show you around. Okay, so here we are about to put the metal beam up in the rafters there to hold up uh, these two corners of the roof, that one right there and that guy back there. So what we did is we have an I-beam here and then we have a sandwich made of uh, wood. So that fills it in so we can uh, attach it to the framing. And we have some metal plates welded in here for, for strength and uh, obviously welded at the top there as well. And we got our lift set up in place and ready to lift it in place. So let's do it. Originally, this kitchen had a peninsula right here. This whole room was completely different. It had a wall here and another wall going this way. And this was a laundry room originally. That's how this layout was originally. So we took out the walls clearly, right? Um, we reframed windows and doors on the backside here. And once we opened up the ceiling, we were actually trying, it had a bunch of drop ceilings and crazy stuff. And um, originally our plan was just to eliminate all those drops and just make everything flat. Well, once we saw the ceiling open, we all just fell in love with how, how nice it looked being vaulted. And that's when we came to phase two during the middle of this, where we kind of changed directions and decided to add a giant metal beam in here because of the type of uh, roof that it has. We were not able to add just a regular wood beam. We had to make a metal beam that is like a chevron shape and weld it together and then put it up here in the rafters to carry the, the load of the roof. And then that allowed us to open up this whole space here. So removing the walls obviously made it really open. That was one level of openness and then adding the vaulted ceiling added another layer of openness to, to the area. And it did give us a lot of very intricate wall angles. As you can see, our ceiling has a few different angles around here because we have like we had a load bearing beam here that we couldn't move unless we wanted to tear out another big section of the roof and rebuild it, which we weren't trying to do. We had to this is sometimes what you got to do in remodeling is, and this is one of the things that I really love about remodeling, is that you can't just do anything you want. You're not starting with a blank slate. You're starting with an existing structure already. Sometimes necessity is the mother of creation and you got to come up with interesting ways to either hide things or accent things or just make things work, right? So that's what I love about it. And in this situation, we were able to open this up and had these extra angles to the ceiling due to the roof line and it looks really, really cool. It looks really cool. It gave them that open space. So then we could start our layout of the kitchen, which was our original layout with the with the ceiling, but, but now just with the more open ceiling. Let's start with the island. Uh, since you have a front and center view, you can see that we have seating on the end, on your end, and we have seating on the back side of the island. Now, when you're uh, designing an island, you want to think about how many people you're trying to seat. Uh, and you also want to think about how you eat, you know, if it's uh, if it's two or four people, you want to sit across from each other or, you know, like we have it right now. Imagine if you have two people and two people, you can have a nice conversation, right? Uh, versus if, if it's four all in a straight line, a little bit tougher to have a conversation that way. But it really depends on how you live and how you party. So you want to think about that when you're designing your island. In this case, we have three seats on one side, which actually we could sneak in a fourth, I could see here. And then we have two on one side here. 
So this is good for five people very comfortably, uh, six people if you wanna get tight on one side, and you could have a pretty nice conversation here having two on one side and the four on the other side. We have a full eight foot piece of quartz countertop on this island here. And then after that, we have a two foot butcher block on the end. This is a custom made piece built into the island. And so in total length, we have a 10 foot island here, which is a really big island. We have cabinets over under the majority of the island, except for the last like, you know, 12, 13, 14 inches of an overhang. Uh, speaking about overhang, your minimum overhangs are typically 12 inches, uh, but you can go all the way out to 14. Just remember the longer you go out, without any supports for your countertop, you wanna make sure you have some kind of supports for the countertop built into the countertop itself. So we like to use flat bars, uh, you know, big flat pieces of um, metal. Um, you can also use um, rebar and some other things you can use just as long as you have metal that goes from the outside piece and all the way in the inside piece. You, and also you remember you wanna, you know, you wanna do at least Whatever you're doing the outside, you wanna do on the inside, if not more. Um, you know, I mean, if you're going 12 inches out, you wanna go at least probably 24 inches in, you know, into the into the countertop uh, to make sure you have some good support. Even with with that support, you know, it's, it's still probably not the best idea to stand on the edge of an overhang, but it will make it a lot stronger. So if somebody does lean up against it or try to sit on it, uh, you, you know, there's a good chance it won't break. Little technical notes there. Now, back to the design. The island is from a company called Arizona Tile, and uh, they are one of my favorite uh, tile and slab suppliers. And this color is called New Venado Beige. It is a white background marble, which is very popular nowadays, with some uh, gray, and does it have a little bit of gold? Uh, it has a slight amount of, um, of an earth tone color, maybe a, maybe a goldish, maybe a brown, maybe a little bit of a taupe, it's kind of hard to tell, but it definitely looks like real marble. It's got really great veining in it, uh, and this is all hand done veining too, which is pretty awesome. It looks a lot like real stone. For the lighting for the island, we went with a two pendant design. Now again, pendants, how many pendants you have is determined by how big the island is, squared by the, no, I don't know what the numbers are, but uh, it's the how big the island is versus how big the balance is on the light fixture. You can see that these light fixtures have a pretty wide balance. I'm gonna guess probably like 15 to 16 inches. Even though you have two lights on a 10 foot island, because the balance is so big, you can see that two is, uh, is appropriate and looks, and looks really great. Another thing you wanna consider when you are doing any kind of fixture, lighting fixture, pendant light, uh, chandelier, things like that, and you have a vaulted ceiling like we have in this situation, you gotta be real careful on where everything is gonna land, you know? Do you need extra posts? If, you know, if this vault was going this direction, which I have another video coming up that I'll show you, where they're going the opposite direction, the vault is going this way, so you have to actually, you know, you have different heights that you have to deal with as you go across the island, because the ceiling is not flat. If you have a flat ceiling, it's a lot easier. Back to the balances. So if you had a smaller balance, like let's say an eight inch balance or a six inch balance, then you could say three or maybe even four might be appropriate in this space. It just depends again on the balance size, alrighty? And your island size. I like the brushed gold accents on, on this design. You can see we have brushed gold hardware on the doors. And then we have a brushed gold accents on the light valances as well. Also the faucet is brushed gold. Now none of these brushed golds match each other. They're made by different manufacturers. One's made by a plumbing manufacturer, one's made by a lighting manufacturer, one's made by a handle manufacturer. But you can see in the space, they all look great. You know, you don't notice that they're not exactly the same. So don't stretch yourself out too much if you're trying to exactly, exactly match all your brushed gold or brushed nickel or what have you, right? Not super important that they all exactly match. On the cabinet side of the island, we start off with our microwave cabinet. Uh, it has a drawer underneath it here, probably for like pots and pans and stuff. They got some extra towels in there. I love these sharp microwaves. These are so cool. They have this little flip down control pad here. And then the best part is this, this open close is a button. So legit. I do this on every time we have one of these microwaves and I can't stop doing it. 
It's my favorite part. All right. Then we go to the drawers. So big banks of drawers, you know, great for pots, pans. They have glassware in here, Tupperware and stuff like that, which is brilliant. Um, on the top, you got flatware. Uh, you know, you can put spatula stuff in there. And then you have another big drawer down here, again, for pots, pans, things like that. And we have another bank of drawers, same situation, same size as these ones next to it and used for the same purposes. On the end, we have trash. Now that's a nice place to put trash. Now I have a trash recycle. It's a double, it's a dual one. So it's 13 and a half gallons trash, 13 and a half gallons recycle. I like to put it close to the fridge. You know, they call the working triangle, you've probably heard. So you'd like to have it close to the sink, the stove, the prep area, and the fridge. Although that does make a square, but, uh, but it's hard to get a square. So you end up with a triangular shape where everything's trying to get into the trash, right? Or it's close by everything. So when you're working at the stove, you turn around, you're working here, it's right next to you. Very simple, very simple. Trying to throw stuff out from the fridge, it's right here. You don't have to walk all the way across. It's little things like that, that go into design that really make a big difference. On the perimeter cabinets, we start off with our big pantry fridge area. In this design, we went with two 31 and a half inch. These are Frigidaires. They're great, great models right now. Uh, highly recommend them. They're totally built in. They have these trim kits on them. They have this one that's non-louvered and then they have a louvered one. Uh, that just means it has more of the little vents in it. Totally built in, full 31 and a half inch wide freezer and 31 and a half inch wide fridge. They have water, they have ice, they have everything. Uh, and really, really good price point versus like your Sub-Zeros and you know, your really, really high-end appliances. This is a really great way to add that look in your house without spending, you know, $20,000 on freaking fridges, right? So uh, I think these at the time, this is 2023. I think now they're like around, they're over three grand a piece. So maybe six grand for the pair, but still, I mean, you're going to save you know, maybe 15 grand or something like that. Not that the Sub-Zero ones aren't great, it's just these ones, you know, such a good price and gives you that same look. Not as tall though as the other ones. I think the other ones are a little bit taller. They might go to a full, full on seven feet, where these ones I think are ending at around 63, 64 inches or something like that. They look fantastic, uh, they function fantastic, and they give you that look. That's the thing we're going for, right? Is that really built in separate fridge and freezer look. Then we did some other tricky stuff on this. We popped out the upper cabinets. As you can see, there's a little, they don't, they don't line up perfectly here. This is popped out. I like to have different depth changes and height changes. I think it adds a little more interest to a space. So in this, in this space, we had this big open wall to work with. So we decided to go and pop out, you know, instead of just having everything flat, pop out the top cabinets so that it just gives a little more interest. We have pantries flanked on both sides. Giant, giant pantry doors. I think these are 21 inch wide with giant rollouts in them. Rollouts in a pantry are a must. Such a good way to have more useful space inside a pantry. You know, if you have a 12 inch deep cabinet or pantry or something like that, then, you know, everything you put on the front is gonna be used, right? But once you go 24 inches deep, that whole back space is just cavernous and wasted space unless you have a drawer like in the base cabinets, we use the drawers, or in this case, we use the rollouts, and you have all that nice space now inside uh, that you gain that back space that you would have lost before. So that's huge. And then just extra storage on the top here. Now these, you can't have rollouts because obviously they would go over your head, so you can't do that. And then the client provided these cool little uh, doorknobs. See that, it's like a little latch, latch and catch system, which is pretty awesome. So that's the fridges. Over on the range side, now the fridge is against this wall over here to your left, my right. And then we have the ranges here behind me. This is a 36 inch range GE monogram. It's beautiful. It's got uh, brushed gold accents on it, brushed gold handles. It's got illuminated knobs. It's just absolutely gorgeous. One big oven. You know, being that it's a 36, you got to go to, I think, 40, 40, the next size up, 42, 48, something like that to get the double oven. So we have a single oven here, but it's got six burners on the top, giant, giant burners too. I would imagine this bad boy is putting out more than 85,000 uh, BTU, which is pretty cool. We have the backsplash here with another Arizona towel product called uh, Flash. This is a three by 12. 
color is ivory, and we set it in a herringbone pattern, which is really, really neat. It looks, it looks really subdued compared to everything else. And I like that, you know, it ha and for this design, it, it makes other things pop more, you know, like we did this custom built hood with custom textured plaster finish on the outside and uh, turned out really great. Another subdued design to this, to this project and then wrapped it with this uh, white oak stain to match the butcher block, which also is coordinates with their white oak floors. So everything kind of has that, that vibe to it very clean, very beachy feel to it. On the sides of the range, we have uh, two double door cabinets. These are both inset cabinets, so you can see that the cabinet doors are inset of the cabinet versus being on top of the cabinet. And then we have a stacked cabinet on top, which is also inset as well. Uh, we have the same latch opening uh, mechanisms for the, for the hardware, for the doors, and everything is in brush gold as well, and uh, looks really beautiful. We have a lot of different angles in this kitchen due to the ceiling that got redone. It adds another interesting feature to the kitchen, the whole kitchen in general. On flanking each side of the, of the range is a pullout, and we have spice pullout on one side, and maybe a utensil pullout on the other side. Ooh, we went utensil pullout and knife block on the other side, which is pretty great. The knives are like in these little, it's almost like sticking your light knife in sand. So it's really cool how it, how it grabs onto it. Then we have our three bank drawer next to that. On, on both sides of those pullouts are three bank drawers. And then next to that is the sink. Now the sink, we have a couple options for sinks. You have your under, your under counter sink, right? And this is called your apron front sink. So this has an apron on the front, right? This one is really the only one that I like to install. This is the Whitehaven by Kohler. And I really like it because it has factory finished edges on it where you make the cabinet cut and then the sink actually overlaps your your cabinet cut which i think is a really clever design idea so you can have a nice factory finished edge versus some sinks i see that don't have that extra little flange on the on the ends so they're just straight up and down now you have to try to scribe your your cut or, or cut your cabinet right alongside the sink you know and a lot of times it's hard to make that cut. Sometimes they're angled, which makes it even harder. And then of course you're trying to put like caulking or something in between the two, which doesn't look as nice as just having this just stick right on. And then we have our fixtures uh, for the sink. We have our two handle faucet. We have our filtered water, and then we have our sprayer. Now, sometimes the sprayer, you know, in a more modern style design, the sprayer will be in the actual centerpiece, but this is a little more antique -y. So in that situation, you have a separate sprayer and it gives you that little kind of more antique vibe. And then next to that, we have our dishwasher that looks like cabinetry because we have our false fronts on it. Look at that, it sings you a little song when you do your dishes. That's nice. So that's really cool. It looks like cabinetry and it's dishwasher. So that's beautiful. Another part of this remodel was the window. So we rebuilt a lot of this wall, I believe. I know we had a big hole in this wall when we brought in the metal beam. We also resized this window. They have a beautiful view here of the valley. So we added some casing around the window with some extra moldings on top just to give it a little more uh, detail, a little more intricacy. And then new black framed window and new black framed slider next to each other. So again, having more of that modern style kind of beachy vibe. And lastly, we have our coffee bar slash butler's pantry. So this is made up of base cabinets. We have a countertop here, and then we have countertop mounted cabinets. So the cabinets are actually on top of the countertop. Now, why that is, is so that you can open this up here. These actually slide back like that. And now you have this open. They have a toaster oven in here. I think they have coffee over here. Yeah, coffee over here. 
So it could be though anything, right? It could be, it could be coffee, it could be your blender, it could be toaster, toaster oven, like in this case, it could be anything, right? The main thing is that you can use it, you can access it, you can see I can access it very easily, it's all right here. And then the doors just slide out and they close. And that's it. And now it's ready for guests to come over. Just that, just that quick and easy. So that's kind of nice about it. Then we have some reeded glass inserts for the upper cabinets here. We have um, glass inserts in here. And what's nice about reeded glass is that you can see kind of what's through it, but it does obscure it a little bit. But still gives you that little bit of mystery versus just a clear glass. If you have clear glass, that's because you really want everyone to see exactly what's in there you know, all your awards and everything or whatever you put in there, right? If you got plates and cups for awards, I guess, right? We did some, also uh, some extra lights above here. So you can see that shoots down on the face of the cabinetry, which is nice, gives you lighting in the space, or we could have done cabinets lights on the inside of the cabinet and that would give you some backlit light for some ambiance. So it depends, or you could have both. You could have the functioning light, functional light and the ambiance light, or you could have one or the other. It's up to you, totally up to you. All right, so now you've seen our latest kitchen remodel, really, really intricate and extensive kitchen remodel, rebuilding parts of their whole roof and rafters and exterior walls and all the fun we went through to get this project the way it is now, the way you see it now, which is just a beautiful, gorgeous kitchen uh, that they'll get to enjoy for many, many decades. So I hope you got some great ideas from this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. We have um, Calicutta something something. What was this thing? Shoot, I forgot. It was Calicutta crap. It wasn't Calicutta crap. I remember that because that's not the best color. I've used that before. It's very brown. That's not even close to what I thought it was. New Venado beige. It's not even close to Calicutta. <laughs> Do you want to sit across from each other? Across from each other? Can I say that? Yeah, it looks, it looks a lot like real stone. Um, now I'm looking at both cameras. Okay, um, pendant uh, design. It took me a while to spit that out. <laughs> for the, for, <laughs> do something. For the pendants, not for the pendants, for the lighting for the island, then you know two, even if you have a 10 foot island like this, you can see two, you can see two is appropriate. Let me do that again. Uh, you have, uh, you, when you have two, even though you have two lights, different, uh, um, uh, yeah, different factories, different manufacturers, right? Is that what I'm trying to say? Yeah. On the per, right, ready, set, go. Um, uh, what do I like to have? Twilight. <laughs> like to have the accents. No, what was it? Uh, depth, right? Not depth, but uh, but is a depth change. Um, oh my God, what is that called when you do that? Um, I want to say like, uh, like, uh, yeah, depth changes, right? For like, uh, oh my God, there's a word and it's missing me. Okay, well, never mind. Um, this textured, we did a textured like, um, what do they call that? Uh, like it's, um, it's uh, plaster, yeah. Um, Top mounted, uh, not top mounted, but um, uh, I'm losing my train of thought here. What are these things called? Stack cabinets. Okay, you know. Um, 
not, you know, of course you know. And if you don't, that's what I'm telling you. Or this could be instant hot too. Nope, oh, it's filtered. Uh, we have our, we have our two, two, um, so dry bar just, or butler's pantry, I should say, more than a dry bar actually. So butler's pantry and coffee bar. Nah, let's, let's, let's let it run with the, anyway, okay, well, I'll give you both. And lastly, we have our buffet slash coffee bar area. Um, not buffet, butler's pantry, or see, I'm never gonna be able to get it right. <laughs> the gods are telling me something. All right, here we go. You can see you have, um, you can have, your, they have a, a, whatever this thing is, toaster oven, fluted glass, not fluted, um, I mean the befores and afters, I mean I'm sure you're gonna show the befores and afters, right? So how do we do that? What am I gonna say here? Um, yeah, so that's pretty, pretty, pretty much what I'm trying to say, I think.